Hello everyone and welcome to a, another SARS Guys instructional video. In today's video, I want to show you how to implement a basic ticketing solution using Zendesk. Uh, for many of you that have signed up for a Zendesk trial or new Zendesk instance, uh, it can be pretty daunting uh, to know where to start configuring once you have this blank or vanilla application in front of you. There's obviously so many different use cases that you can utilize Zendesk for. So uh, for the purposes of just taking you through the basic setup, uh, I will use an example today uh, of a use case showing you how to configure Zendesk to receive support emails and assign the emails to the correct support group. So very basic use case, uh, just an email ticketing system that we will set up, but I believe it will give you enough insight on just where to at least start setting up a Zendesk instance and give you uh, the look and feel of how the configuration or the administration section works. The um, first thing that you would want to do uh, if you don't already have Zendesk or you, or you have not already signed up for a trial, uh, you can get a free 14-day trial from Zendesk. So uh, utilizing any of uh, the Affiliate links that I have on the sarsguys.com website will give you access to this 14-day trial. Um, once you click on the link, it has a simple form that you just need to complete. It's going to ask you for some information. And uh, we'll quickly go ahead and just do that and register for a new trial. So once you sign up for the trial, uh, you will receive an email from Zendesk. You're going to have to just open that up and verify that the email you provided is correct and then your trial will be active. I'll go ahead and do that quickly. All right, so once you receive the email, you will see there's a button that we need to click on here to verify the email address and activate the trial account. Okay, great. So the first thing we see now is the wizard that Zendesk will present as you first activate your trial where you can populate some of this information that will help you uh, configure the, the rest of the Zendesk instance. So we'll just fill in this form quickly. You can specify your experience here as well. Um, the, the wizard will adapt to what you provide. Uh, how do I want people to reach out? So these are the channels that you can select that you think you might use. Um, you can always configure these later in the instance as well. So for now, I am just going to select, we're going to do an email. Who do we help? So who are our customers? Are we a business to customers or end user? Uh, or do we deal with employees? Or it's an internal help center or ticketing system we're setting up or business to business. So. I'm just going to select, uh, let's let's pretend we do retail or something of that sort, so B2C. How many agents? Uh, fairly small retail business. So let's just say we have one to three agents. And when do we plan to launch? We want to do this as soon as possible. All right, we go on to the next page. And now this takes us into our new blank Zendesk instance. As you can see, uh, Zendesk will provide you with some prompts here that you can work through as well. And this, this is very helpful to get it all set up. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be following the prompts as provided. So I'm not using the wizard uh, at all. We are just going to focus on a basic support implementation that will allow tickets to be created via email. So the way we would go about that would be to configure our email to be forwarded to a Zendesk uh, email account and that then in turn will create the tickets. So you have a bunch of icons on the left, we have views, then we have the uh, list of customers that you have in your system. Uh, customers are grouped into organizations. We have the reporting module uh, referred to as Explore on the left here. So this is where you can navigate to some of the modules within Zendesk. And what we are trying to do is get into the administration portal where we can start setting up the configuration. So there are two ways to get there. We have this gear icon on the left, which you will see says admin. So I could click on that and there will be a link here to take me to the admin center. Another way of getting there is using the, the product menu. So these four little squares in the top right corner, if you click on that, you will see support shows up at the top, which is the ticketing solution. And this is the main page we are on at the moment. 
guide will be your help center if you do decide to have an online help center where you can publish knowledge base articles or have forms that customers can use to submit requests then this is where you would uh, administer your guide gather is a community forum product or module that can be added to zendesk uh, chat will be your your chat bot that you can uh, enable talk would be the voice feature so if you do want to integrate any voice functionality in zendesk and this is where you'd find that explore as mentioned earlier is your reporting tool uh, cell is a zendesk crm solution and so but we're not going to go into any of these today uh, as mentioned this is just an email ticketing use case that we want to set up uh, so I'm not going to touch on workforce management or quality insurance. We're just going to the admin center. All right, so this is what the admin center looks like. We have some statistics over here, some shortcuts to the various modules. But most of the time, you would just go to the menu on the left here. It has a very neat search functionality. So if you wanted to look for a particular object that you want to configure, you could use the search box. Uh, or you can just browse through these various menus on the left. So there are many ways to approach setting up a Zendesk instance. You know, it, it changes perhaps by the use case, but I have found that uh, the sequence we'll follow now somewhat simplifies things. Uh, doing things in the, the right order helps a lot, so you don't have to keep switching back and changing things after you've made configuration. So let's just start off with the uh, the, the following suggestions. So the first thing we want to do is create the agents or at least some of the agents that are going to need access to Zendesk. And the reason we do that is the agents are grouped together in groups and those groups uh, we need to have configured when we come to configuring the workflows so that we can identify how tickets or where tickets need to be assigned. So we need to have the groups in place before we can do that. To add agents to your instance, you would go to the people menu and under team, you will see team members. All right, so we will go uh, into teams and this is where you can add agents. At the moment, there is one agent, uh, which is actually an administrator role, which is the one you added when you created the trial. You can create additional members just by filling in this short form. Right, and now once you've added your agent, we want to select a role. So depending on your license in Zendesk, you might have the capability of creating custom security roles where you can configure what access each role has. The default roles are displayed in this dropdown and uh, administrator would be full access to be able to change configurations and agent would be the agents that will be updating, receiving tickets, uh, closing them out, responding to your customers. You can assign uh, tickets to agents. Um, so this is what majority of your agents would be assigned to. Your licensing on Zendesk is linked to agents and admins. So you would be paying for each user that has either of these roles. If your licensing allows you to create light agents, then you could set up agents to be light agents, which are free from a licensing standpoint, but they have very limited access within Zendesk. Uh, so they might be able to add comments to tickets, they can view tickets, but you cannot assign tickets to them. And a lot of the workflow uh, processes don't apply to light agents. So very restricted role, but in some cases uh, it does help. There, there are use cases for using light agents. Uh, the same goes with contributors. So the, these two are roles with less access within Zendesk, uh, but for the most part, we are adding our agents that will be working on tickets. We will create them as agents. Right, now we have our two team members. We have an administrator, we have an agent. All right, so the next step that we want to do is link these agents to their respective groups. So I'm going to go under people to groups, uh, you will see that as part of the trial, a default group was created. That's called support. So maybe we want to rename this one. We'll go to edit and we're going to call this uh, customer service. 
All right, so this is our default group. Default group just means that when tickets are created, if our various workflow or business rules do not know where to assign that ticket to, that it will be assigned to this group by default. So it just helps that you don't have tickets that are created that don't end up going anywhere. So this would be a, almost a catch-all uh, in that case. All right, so at this stage, we have both members assigned to this group. So we will go and change that shortly. I just wanted to rename that one to custom service. Now we, we mentioned in our use case that we want to have a second group uh, for placing orders. So we're going to go over on the right here, click add group, and we create a group called orders. This is not set as defaults. So we just leave that as is. And, and we can now see the various team members that we have in the system. So let's just add George Johns as our support agent that belongs to the orders group. So now that we have our groups created, we actually want to go and configure the channel that creates these tickets. And that we will find on the left here under the channels section. So channels are all the means that allow you to create tickets in Zendesk. So as you can see under channels, we have messaging, text, Facebook pages. So all of the, the talk is the voice functionality, bots, etc. So there are various methods of creating tickets. For this use case, we are looking at email. The first thing you have here is the space at the top where you can add and create your support email boxes. But below that, I just want to bring some attention to the various configuration settings here. You can work through these and uh, they've got very detailed descriptions on what each of these options do. Uh, for me, always the, the trick here is if you don't quite know what a particular checkbox does or setting does, then don't change it. Uh, do the research on it and figure out if that is something that you want turned on or off. But if you are not sure, then just leave it as it is at the moment. Right, so what we want to do today is just look at the support email addresses. So there are a couple of ways to configure your email ticketing system. Um, and this all depends on how you are planning to receive requests via email. So if you have an existing support email address, uh, maybe with your domain, something like support at sarsguys.com that is already or will be receiving the inquiries from your customers, then you will keep that email address, but you would configure email forwarding on your email server that will send those emails received from customers at support at sarsguys, for example, it would forward those emails to a support address within Zendesk. So when you set up your trial or set up your new account, it will come standard with a support at your subdomain for your Zendesk account. So in this case, it is sarsguyshelp.zendesk.com. This was just something that was created by default when you set up your new trial or your new account. Okay, so you have the option uh, with this very obscure little drop down on the right here to create a new Zendesk address. So if you wanted to create something else, you could do that. If you have multiple support addresses that you want to forward into Zendesk, uh, let's say you have five different addresses, uh, order processing, support, maybe sales, info uh, at your own domain, you could forward all of those five to a single address within Zendesk, or you could go and create separate support addresses uh, within Zendesk that you can link those emails one by one uh, or on a one-to-one -one relationship. So you could have the sales at sarsguys.com email forward to a sales at sarsguyshelp.zendes.com email. So you could set that email forwarding up and that would then create the tickets. If you do not have any support email addresses and this is completely new to you, you don't have a mail server, you could in fact just use this email address and let your customers send emails to the zendesk.com email address and that would create tickets. So you could send this email. And for testing, this sometimes works, works great. So before you actually turn on your email forwarding to activate your new Zendesk integration or, or email forwarding, you could test ticket creation by sending emails directly to the Zendesk email address. So I hope that makes sense. So that is for incoming emails. Now, let's say you do have, uh, for example, support at sarsguys.com, your own external domain or external support address that will be forwarding to this uh, email address within Zendesk to create the tickets. 
when your agents respond back to the customer, you want to make sure that the email that is used or, or seen by the customer is your own domain external email and not the Zendesk email. Um, and in order to do that, we need to create an external email address. So the Zendesk will use your email to set things up. So to do that, we need to add your external email address in the section provided. And the next page will give you instructions on how to set up your email forwarding. As you can see, it indicates to send forward emails to support at sarsguys.com. There is a link to a knowledge base article with step-by-step instructions on how to do the email forwarding. All right. All right. So in this case, we are not going to create additional emails. We are going to share this email with our customers. Right now, the next thing that we need to do is set up a ticket form. And to do that, we would go to our objects and rules. And this is where a lot of the business rules and workflows are configured. And under tickets, you will see we have an option here for forms and fields. Right, so I'm just going to go into forms. So forms are what contain your tickets. So any tickets that are created are associated with a form. And a form consists of a number of fields. Some of these fields are added by default. So you have a subject field. And this will always contain the same information that was in the email subject. You have a description field, which would be the same information that's contained in the email body or content of your email will all go into this description field. They have these little lock icons, meaning these are required to be on any forms. We are not able to remove them. And then we have some additional fields that are added to this default form to indicate the type of the ticket, the priority of the ticket, and a topic. So you can remove these fields if you don't need them. Uh, for example, I'm going to just remove the type, for example. Uh, priority we can leave there. We have a topic field here as well. Now I'm going to click save on this form. So we only have one form at the moment. That's a default ticket form depending on your licensing you'll be able to add additional forms if you do have a license for that. So you could have different forms for, for different purposes within your business. You can indicate if a form will be available to agents only or are the forms available, for example, on your help center for customers to submit tickets via a web form. So in this case, we are not looking at activating the help center or using it for external um, visibility to allow ticket creation. This is mainly just so we can associate the tickets created by emails to the form. Now you could add additional fields to that form. So let's say a ticket is created associated with a form. Maybe you want to add some custom fields to it to have the agent capture uh, an account number or an order number. So you can go into fields. You can create things like drop downs or text, number fields, check boxes. Um, so, for example, let's just create one here that says uh, account number. All right, we create a text field. This is only available for agents that they can edit and view the field. We are not presenting this on a web form to customers or anything like that. So, we just leave that as agents can edit and we click save. So, now we have a new account number field. As you can see, if I go back to the forms, all right, and we open up this form, you will see that text field is now going to be on our form. All right, so this will make more sense once we see this all in the agent workspace. So now that we have our email set up, we know we need to turn on the email forwarding to get this all to work. We have a form that's going to be associated with all of our tickets. Now we need to start setting up our business rules. If this video was at all helpful, uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, your support is really appreciated. And please visit our website at sarsguys.com where we have a blog with uh, some more free guides and best practices that could help you optimize or set up your Zendesk instance. And please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we have a contact form on our website. We appreciate the support and we'll see you next time.